Hi, I'm Jessica O'Dwyer from the nutrition team at the Optimum Health Clinic. Welcome to our cuppa and a chat series where we take a few minutes to have a chat with our friends and colleagues in the health industry to explore some topics around testing clinical tools which may be of interest for our fatigue community. Today, I am joined with the senior scientific consultant, Lydia from Makewell. Welcome, Lydia. I'm very excited for us to have a chat today. <laughs> Hi, Jessica. Thank you for having me. I'm also super excited to be here and to do this with you, of course. In the chronic fatigue community, mitochondria is a buzzword. Mitochondrial health. Yeah. Now, for a lot of people, they may not understand what mitochondria is. And one of your products the energy active. Mm -hmm. Can you just outline for our community the relevance of mitochondrial health and where where energy active plays a role yeah. in that? As you said, so I think mitochondria is a term that many people have heard about or mm. are unsure what it might mean, actually. So I believe when we literally speak about it, you could think about mitochondria as being super tiny powerhouses, which are present inside of the cells. I love that powerhouse. And, yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> because essentially they produce energy in the end. And there are cells which don't have mitochondria at all, so such as the erythrocytes, that is the red blood cells that we have. And there are other cells which have a very high density of mitochondria. And um, for example, heart cells, because mm. the heart requires a lot of energy, it has a very high energy demand. And this already tells how important mitochondria are for the production of energy. And, and the brain, and the brain, the brain yeah, sure, a lot of, course, of energy, definitely. you see a yeah, lot of, of brain fog. Ones, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so structurally, you think of them as having different membranes. There's an outer membrane, there's an inner membrane. And in between those two, you have something that's called the intermembrane space. And you also have a matrix that's kind of in the middle of the mitochondria. Essentially, for the energy production, we do have different enzymes which are embedded, kind of a chain, in the inner mitochondrial membrane. And alongside this chain, there's a transport of electrons which in the end produces something that's called ATP. Now, ATP is an abbreviation and stands for adenosine triphosphate. And very fun word. Very fun word, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds very sophisticated. Mm -hmm, so we'll stick, stick with ATP, I guess. And this is basically what keeps us going. So ATP is our cellular energy currency. This is how we could put it. So every process that is going on in our body needs ATP. And that is why it's so important. Mm. And we need vital nutrients for each of those steps. And this brings in then the energy active. Exactly. So we have, when we speak about mitochondrial dysfunction, we can have a structural dysfunction, such as a membrane leakage or just anything that relates to the structure of the mitochondria. Or we can have a, a depletion of certain ingredients, um, such as coenzyme Q10. This is mm. one of those um, parts. It's a, it's a cofactor which is important to transport electrons along the chain in order to produce ATP. And particularly in CFS, there has been research that coenzyme Q10 has been depleted mm. and also that coenzyme Q10 supplementation was able to reduce the symptoms of fatigue in some cases. And that is why coenzyme Q10 is a very common and uh, is a very common in supplementation. And that is why we also feature that in our energy active formulation um, to support from that part. And we do also feature phospholipids, which are an essential part of the cell membrane. So speaking about structural disruptions for example and other substances like aconitine that's yes. something that our body can produce ourselves but when mm -hmm. we have a high energy demand and um, we may need supplementive aid and essentially it's required to transport long chain fatty acids inside of the mitochondria in order to make them available for ATP production as well. Yes, so we like to call it the, the shuttle bus. Exactly, yes. the shuttle bus. So um, when you eat your fats you need carnitine to take it on the bus bring it in to what's called the Krebs cycle and then we produce energy. Exactly. So that's a great yeah. ingredient to yeah. have in your yeah. product. Yeah, and then additionally, we feature different uh, vitamins such as pantothenic acid, vitamin B5, uh, which is important in the metabolism of macronutri macronutrients. And also vitamin C, it plays a crucial role in the reduction of tiredness and fatigue. Mm. And like that, we have a combination in the energy active, which supports from a more specific angle than, than a multivitamin like the mitoimmune that we discussed before. Yes. And it's more directed to particularly mitochondrial support. NAD plus. Yes. This can be another buzzword in the fatigue community. 
and it can be incredibly complex. Mm -hmm. So for our community, can you talk about NAD plus? You have it in one of your products, which Mm -hmm. is a really great practitioner product. Can you explain NAD plus to us? (laughs) Yeah, so let's start with the name maybe. Um, NAD plus, just like ATP, is an abbreviation. And it stands for nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide, which is again, another very funny word. Very fun <laughs> word. <laughs> so again, we'll stick to the abbreviation. Yeah. It's just like to have uh, the information complete. Now, NAD plus is also a very large molecule, and it can it's consisting of different smaller fractions, which are called precursors. So you could basically chop it down, which is also done by enzymes, into smaller fractions. And it has many different described um, areas of application or uses in our body. Actually, it was first described in 1906, I believe. That was a long time ago when people did fermentation I didn't know experiments. That. Yeah. Mm. But of course, back then, they didn't really have an idea of what they're looking at at the moment. And nowadays, this has grown quite big because there's a lot of information about NAD plus being involved in uncountable health-related conditions and areas. Um, there's more than 300 biochemical reactions being described and more wow. to come, which are directly depending on the availability of NAD plus. So that's quite a lot. And mainly it has three functions. So it works as an electron acceptor and donor alongside that chain to produce ATP. That's one of the functions in the energy metabolism. But um, it also has functions in, uh, in health-related diseases. It works as an enzymatic cofactor. It helps other enzymes to, to do their job. And it's also an enzymatic substrate. Um, so it can be chopped down by different enzymes which are doing their job of doing a biochemical reaction. And that's also how that's also one of the reasons why NAD plus levels do decline while we're aging. So that's a, that's a natural process that mm. just happens. And the thing is that we need we can produce NAD plus de novo, and we also consume it. So in the end, while we age, we have a lower efficacy of the production of the NAD plus in our body, mm-hmm. and we also have a higher consumption. And of course, essentially, this comes down to a depletion to a depletion of the levels. I suppose with stress being one of the kind of root causes that we can see with Mm -hmm. with depletion of NAD plus in the fatigue community, that can be various ages and it's it's great to have that in one of your one of your products, but it is very individualized very individualized also we have to see that stress is also entwined with inflammation of course Mm. and inflammation is also a huge contributor to fatigue related conditions and cfs in particular also um stress related conditions and inflammation have been associated with nad plus depletion also so these kind of things are very complex there's so many different pathways biochemical reactions ingredients that may deplete or there would maybe also an ingredient which is too high in, in abundance. Mm. Um, so it's it's just a super complex topic. I think we could fill hours discussing that, um, particularly yes. if we would go in depth. And yeah, but it's very interesting also to look at the recent developments, the science that is being done. Um, mm. That's very encouraging to see that there's so many open questions, of course, and we will hear a lot about these related issues and things like NAD plus or um, the microbiome in, in fatigue, for example. Mm. So things like that will always try to the research will always try to strive for more knowledge, obviously, which is required. And yeah, that's why we're continuing <laughs> to learn. <laughs> yeah. No matter how long we've been in the industry, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's just constant learning. Yeah. And it's stuff that we love translating into clinical practice. Um, so it's all the fun stuff that we're doing in the background <laughs> to, <laughs> to, to translate that across, but to look at that person as an individual yeah. and to be able to understand what may be best in, in their in their context yeah. Yeah. so for our fatigue community we do offer offer free 15 minute chats uh, with our team at the optimum health clinic to see if this is an appropriate step to see a nutritional therapist to understand which may be best appropriate for them so thank you lydia thanks again for having me it was a pleasure you're more than welcome <laughs>